guys welcome back to another video thank you so much for tuning in another one and um, if you haven't already please like this video subscribe to my channel i'd really appreciate it this helps me to help you if this video has been helpful then i know i can make more like this um but yeah we're gonna as i said in the titles you've probably seen um talk about cycle foods so basically this is around your hormonal cycle and um, obviously there's four different phases i've talked a bit more in depth about this in another video but just for uh, the reference the purpose of this video the reference of this video the purpose of this video and uh, there's four cycles so there is the menstrual which is the bleed then there's the follicular which is just after the bleed for about a week to 10 days um, then I have ovulation which is around a few days obviously everybody differs um, and then we'll have the luteal phase for around two weeks um, and then obviously it repeats so basically what I want to talk about today is something that um, I found really interesting when I was doing lots of research about the female body about hormones about our cycle it's been something that has been really interesting for me to learn about as a coach as a trainer for me personally and help a lot of other women um, and like this is something that I wanted to share and it's something that I've implemented myself um, and there's about different foods at different points of your cycle because as your cycle changes your hormone levels change so your micronutrient levels um, differ and you have different needs now before I get into this this is not exclusive like to these foods like yes I'm saying I've implemented this in to my lifestyle but I don't just stick exclusively to these kinds of foods and um, I still have foods that I love and that I want but I try to incorporate more of these foods to help and I do find that it has been beneficial compared to times when I maybe slack a bit on it or previously when I wasn't following it at all um, it does make a difference to my cycle and how I'm feeling physically and mentally throughout my cycle because you know as a woman um, if you are a female watching this you'll know how much your mood can dip um, as your cycle goes on or dip as it can vary sorry and then it can really dip sort of before your period so it can help with that eating these kinds of foods can help to balance out your hormones um you know and if you're doing this from the start of your cycle so at the end of the bleed or the, the start of the bleed i should say um this will then help you benefit you into the next phase and then if you do it again it'll benefit you into the next phase and this will like it just all has a positive knock-on effect um, so it's just something that I wanted to share. I'm not saying something that you absolutely have to do, um, but it's something that I found really interesting and beneficial for me and it is something that I recommend to clients to if they are struggling with it. So we'll jump into it. So we will start with the menstrual phase. That is technically when the that's the first day of your cycle is the day that you start bleeding. Um, so that's day one of your new cycle. So obviously at this point of your cycle your hormones drop and they're at the lowest um, so again you need micronutrients to really build up the blood that you're losing at this point and you also need foods that are going to support your kidneys also obviously proteins and um, fat should be incorporated in your diet every day but at this point of your cycle um, they're really beneficial because they compensate um, for the hormone, the lack of your hormones, sorry, um, as I say, because they're at the lowest level and then they help to keep your energy more stable um, because your hormone levels are at the lowest, your energy is at the lowest and because, not to get too confusing, because you burn more calories in the build-up to your period, your energy can be lacking even more from that. So obviously, um, again, if you're a woman watching this, you will know how intense it is when you are on your period especially the first couple of days and obviously that's because you are shedding the lining of your uterus so it's really important to focus on um dense nutrient dense foods here and um, things like red meat kidney beans buckwheat and um, they're all really good foods for this point of your cycle and again help with iron that you're possibly losing or you're you are losing um, when you are bleeding. Also focusing on things like blueberries and blackberries because of the low glycemic index 
they're really good to help keep your sugar levels steady um, and again that will help balance out your energy and your mood so you're not having big dips and um peaks and dips sorry so that's uh, like not going to affect your energy and your mood um too much which sugar can do now i'm not saying sugar's bad um but stuff like this like blueberries blackberries and all those kinds of um berries are just a little bit better to get that sweetness in that you're potentially craving um but also to keep your mood at a nice level because that is what we want um, and again as well just adds in lots of fiber and antioxidants in your diet which is really important around this phase of your cycle and um, so i've got like a list of other foods just to go through and um, so i'm going to kind of read off the list so excuse me for doing this but i just want to make sure i get them right so obviously a lot of foods <laughs> that i can't remember from memory um so in this phase as i mentioned already like buckwheat wild rice um and then vegetables such as um beetroot um burdock kale and um, mushrooms um different variations of mushrooms as well and um, blackberries blueberries uh, watermelons a really good one at this point too so beans like kidney beans um uh black soybeans turtle beans they're all really good um at this point as well of your cycle um, and then nuts like sesame seeds chestnut and sunflower seeds um are good again at this point as i said before like getting in those fats is really important and then similarly um some protein sources would be duck, pork, and then fish like sardines, squid, mussels, lobster, if you're into that, um, and crab can all be really good. Um, it is recommended to try and drink decaf coffee at this point of your cycle too, but I mean, I would never say to cut anything in, out, out, and as I say, I'm like going through some foods that are beneficial in this part of your cycle, but I'm not saying that it's limited to this list and they're the only things that you should eat because I certainly don't do that but including them in your diet alongside other things um as I say can be more beneficial than not including them at all so even if you're just having I don't know like a yo like some yogurt add in some blackberries add in some blueberries have a big bowl of watermelon um on the side of your breakfast or you could have it after your lunch um as like a sweet snack and um, something like that and would be beneficial or if you're making something like spaghetti bolognese add in some mushrooms add in some like kale and things like that in there so you maybe can't taste them as much and then you're still getting those things in as i say all these foods are gonna help to keep your energy and your mood stable to support your low hormone levels also going to support your kidneys at this point of your cycle and um, and get those micronutrients back in as you're losing a lot of blood so then once the bleed's finished, you go into the follicular phase and um, your hormones will begin to rise here and your energy will likely be at its highest or one of its highest, I'd say maybe it's the next phase is, but it should be starting to rise anyway. You should be feeling pretty good. You're over your period and you know, that horrible bits over. I do always think just after your period, you feel great. <laughs> like it's like, yay, it's over. Um, so your metabolism can actually be slower in this phase. So it's important to have foods to support that. Um, and this can kind of be like the spring season of your cycle is what it's been referred to as. So light foods in this phase are definitely beneficial. Things like salads, lots of veggies, lean proteins, um, and Foods, and I never know if I pronounce this right, so sorry if I don't, but fight, fight restrogens, I'm going to say. Basically, uh, they're found in foods that mimic the body's natural estrogen when it's at its lowest, so it helps to keep um, a nice balance in those estrogen levels when, as I say, they are very low at this point of the cycle. So um, in this part of the cycle, some foods to include, so in terms of like grains, um or carbohydrates we'll say um oats are really good rye so like rye bread would be a good one barley and wheat um and then vegetables things like broccoli carrot lettuce um peas zucchini i say zucchini we don't say zucchini in the uk courgettes basically um, and string beans and then i thought i was going to say that wrong there i just can't pronounce words i had to really think about that before i said it but yeah basically courgette not zucchini um, and then fruits like avocado grapefruit lemons limes oranges plums 
pomegranates and cherries um, are all really good. I just have frozen cherries actually, like I have even with the berries as well, um, I have a lot of frozen fruit and then it lasts a bit longer because I know buying those kind of fruits can get quite expensive and they go off like an out of date quite quick so frozen is quite good for stuff like that. Um, and then in terms of legumes like green lentils, um, mung beans, lima beans um, and black eyed peas, not the band what a dad joke <laughs> but yeah things like that can uh, be beneficial at this point of your cycle nuts like brazilian cashew flax seeds and pumpkin seeds are good at this point of the cycle and then things like chicken and eggs and um, for those lean protein sources and in terms of seafood um freshwater clam and trout can be good here um, and then other things like nut butter olives um, and pickles are other things that are recommended at this point of the cycle so as i say you know this point of the cycle is where um you feel a bit refreshed the period's over and your hormone levels are starting to rise so these kind of foods will help to um you know balance out what's not there and then again benefit you going into the next part of your cycle which is ovulation so then in ovulation uh, your hormone levels are pretty much at their peak here i would say um particularly estrogen and um, so the foods here help to uh, balance out that spike because you don't want too much estrogen in your body and these foods also support your heart around this point so raw foods are particularly good in this phase of your cycle things like bell peppers um spinach tomatoes leafy greens um, and berries because they can have a cooling effect and lots of fiber which is needed at this point of your diet and these foods can also help with and um, pms symptoms that you might experience around this point of your cycle so i often used to find that when i got the ovulation point i'd always get spots around um my jawline which is um typical sign of too much estrogen like in your body and just like your hormones peaking so this could be something to include for that I'm not saying it's going to get rid of acne or anything like that but it can help with acne and bloating which is another um annoying PMS symptom now I do find that bloating kind of begins from here for me and then is pretty much all the way up until my period at this point and um, not all like obviously all day every day but this is kind of where it begins and that can be due to the spike in the estrogen so these kind of foods can help with that again they're not going to banish it completely but they can help with that so in terms of carbs or grains things like um quinoa or quinoa however you say it um a good and corn and then vegetables like asparagus as i've already mentioned bell pepper um, Brussels sprouts, um, dandelion, eggplant, which is what's that? Aubergine is what uh, it would be, yeah, in the UK. Um, and then spinach and tomatoes um, is another few that I mentioned there before. Fruits like apricot, coconut, figs, um, guava, and then raspberries and strawberries are. Uh, good here too so I know I mentioned berries earlier than the menstrual cycle it's like the darker berries sorry I should have probably specified that and then the lighter coloured berries are better around this point of your cycle and um, so then in terms of legumes and um, lentils again but this is so red lentils this time so the follicular is more green lentils and this is red and then nuts and seeds like almonds flax seeds pistachios pecan and pumpkin seeds again which is fairly similar to the follicular phase so that obviously the phases all just blend into one so you can um you know kind of move through transition through them smoothly and the foods kind of overlap a little bit and um, in terms of meat so of meat and fish lamb salmon tuna and shrimp are recommended at this point and then this is the best time of the cycle to have alcohol um coffee and chocolate now they're three vices <laughs> i suppose you would say but i would never say cut them out of your diet completely you know don't arrange your night out around your ovulation <laughs> um but this is kind of the best time for your body to kind of digest it and absorb it without it having too much of a negative impact on you because your alcohol intake can actually affect your cycle it can stop you can delay your period and things like that that's another another video completely and I'm, again like I still drink alcohol I would never personally cut it out because I want to do that and um, I would never recommend doing something that you don't want to do obviously you know everything within moderation because too much of anything isn't good for you um, and the same with chocolate but like you know 
and coffee. I have coffee every day, but I try to limit my intake. And same with chocolate. It's about just getting a nice little balance. And if you find that you can't go day without chocolate, have a little bit every day. Um, it really definitely does help with that. But yeah, that this is probably the, the food for me personally that I love the most at this part of the cycle. And it's the shortest part of your cycle, obviously. Um, but again, that's what I'm saying. Like These are foods I love the most that I eat pretty much every day. Um, I would never exclude them completely, but they're definitely ones that can help um, in ovulation where your estrogen spikes so that you don't have too much estrogen in your body, which can have a negative impact. So then we'll move into the luteal phase um, of the cycle, which I suppose is sometimes referred to as the second half of your cycle. Um, so this is where your progesterone levels increase um, and you have quite slow digestion here you're actually burning more calories per day in this phase um, anywhere from 100 to 300 which I went over in a previous um, YouTube video about hormones in your cycle so you're often more hungry here have more cravings so I would always recommend eat a little bit more here um, to keep on top of those cravings give your body what it needs it obviously needs more food because it needs more energy and um, fiber rich foods here are best to support the large intestine and also having more fiber can help to keep you nice and full um or fuller for longer and give your body that energy that it wants um and so B vitamins sorry um are recommended here to boost the production of progesterone but also stabilize your blood sugar levels so slow burning carbs like brown rice and um, sweet potato and then leafy greens such as collards, mustard greens and watercress that are high in calcium and magnesium to flush out water retention because as I mentioned there before this can be where bloating is the worst in your cycle and um, we have a lot more water retention here um, due to the increase in progesterone and your hormones as your body gets ready um, for your upcoming period but essentially your body is getting ready to fertilize the egg really um, so that's why all of these things happen so foods like chickpeas, pears apples and walnuts they're all really high in fiber and will help the liver and the large intestine to flush out any excess estrogen um, and reduce the effect the effects of estrogen dominance which i mentioned there before and um, you know as i said this is the point of your cycle where the your hormones are peaking at the highest which can be why we get a bit more emotional pms all those sorts of things so eating these kind of foods can help to sort of balance that out a little bit more and hopefully help you to balance um your mood and things like that um, so complex carbs as well to stabilize um, serotonin and dopamine levels because again going back to that PMS the moods um, it can help to try and prevent that and as I say sort of stabilize and balance your hormones that a little bit more so foods to have in this cycle recommended to include in this cycle so as I already mentioned brown rice millet is another good one in terms of grains and then vegetables like cabbage cauliflower celery and um, I mentioned collards there before cucumber garlic ginger leek and um, mustard greens I mentioned onions parsnips pumpkin radish squash sweet potato and watercress which I also already mentioned and then fruits like apples dates peaches pears and raisins um legumes like chickpeas which I mentioned and then navy beans and great northern beans um nuts and seeds like pine nuts sesame seeds sunflower seeds and walnuts and then meats like beef turkey cod flounder and halibut and then other things are mint peppermint and spirulina and um, so that again they're just things that will help um to do as i mentioned there before just to keep um to support your large intestine sorry and help with your mood at this point this is arguably the hardest point of your cycle because as i say your hormones peak here yeah, you get more cravings you're burning more calories your body's using more energy all of these things um so it's important to get these things into your diet to give your body what it needs. So that's a sort of brief overview of each phase of the cycle. I try to go into as much detail as possible without um, making it complicated. Also made sure, wanted to make sure that I included like enough relevant information, but I just can't stress enough that it doesn't need to be, you know, specific to just these foods. I mean, there's no harm in doing that if you want to eat those foods, but I do think it's important to 
not get too fixated because when I first like, read about this I was like right I'm only eating those foods and it was just a bit unrealistic um you know like you can't as I mentioned before there you can't just eat chocolate on a few days of the month and you can't just have alcohol on those few days and um you know I did actually cut out coffee for a long while just completely um, but then I realized I actually like coffee and it's better to just have a little bit in moderation than to have absolutely loads on none at all um as I mentioned there before everything in moderation like there's room for everything in your diet regardless of your goal whether your goal is fat loss maintenance or muscle building and um, gaining weight whatever it is there's always room for any foods and too much of anything isn't good like as I said like one extreme to the other isn't necessarily good it's just finding a balance that works for you and you know you might have times where that balance falls off completely and you know you just have to kind of hit reset and that's fine and um, I still have times like that now where I feel like yep yeah, I'm nailing it I've got a great 80-20 balance in my diet and then I'm like oh it's like 80-20 the other way and I just have to rein it in a little bit and it's just about having the knowledge and the tools to do that um but I definitely think um our cycles make us as females so unique and it's so important to you know learn about it and learn what works for us and our body and as I mentioned at the start of this video it's something that completely changed the game for me like so many things made sense that over the years I just thought was me being weak and like poor willpower and I know from helping a lot of other females through my uh, personal training and online coaching that this has literally like blown their minds like they can't actually believe it and when like I tell them just something as simple as like you burn more calories before you do on your period that's why you get cravings they're like oh I can't believe that so you can actually eat more and it actually helps and so many women are like wow like if I only had known that sooner I thought I was just being weak and like just had no willpower had no determination and actually it's just your body saying I need more energy and like it's very that's why it's very important to have knowledge I always say knowledge is power because in knowing that it actually makes you not be as hard on yourself and you're more likely to actually think do you know what like I'm just doing the best I can and then you stick to it because if you think I'm weak I've got no willpower and you start that negative self-talk then you just give up and think what's the point I can never do it and you just end up in this negative cycle of never be getting where you want to be because you think you just can't do it when you can it's just having the right knowledge and the right tools to do so so yeah I went off on a bit of a tangent there but hopefully that makes sense anything that doesn't make sense in the video either messages on instagram pop it in the comments below i'd be happy to answer it anything that you want us to elaborate on in a separate video as i always say i'd be more than happy to do so but hopefully you find this helpful um and yeah please like subscribe and i'll see you on the next one